This is Peter McPhail with United Country Lifestyle Properties of Maine, and today I am with Spencer Wood. He's got a fantastic listing here in Addison. Beautiful spot, Spencer. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're out here on Pleasant Bay in Addison, Maine, sitting on a 110-acre parcel here with over 10,000 feet of water frontage along Pleasant Bay, which you'll be able to see lobster boats and pleasure boats going through all day. So it is a deep water channel right here. Yep. And uh, the land itself, we've got two points on it that are pretty prominent. Uh, White's Point, where the house is, yep. and then Bray's Point on the south. Yep. So where we sit right now, uh, we're about three and a half miles roughly to the uh, beginning of Pleasant Bay in the open ocean. Uh, so it's an easy cruise from, from the ocean to come on into this nice little safe spot down here in Pleasant Bay where you could easily put a mooring out for, for one of your boats or a couple if you have uh, some, some different options. But it's an absolutely beautiful spot, cuts down on the wind, and it's just a beautiful area to kind of check out the down east scene and watch the boats and the animals, seals especially, are right out here hanging out on the rocks. So you're gonna get a really grand tour of uh, Maine and the, and the life that we have down here. No, it is, a, is an absolutely beautiful spot, Spencer. And what I like about Addison, Maine, is it's quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, ha you don't have the hustle and bustle that you're going to get in Bar Harbor. But yet we're only about an hour from Ellsworth, um, 25 minutes to Machias. Um, about 1,200 people here, so it, it's very peaceful. And there's a lot of history here in this town, too. You know, it was incorporated in 1797. And it was known back then, through the 1800s to the 1900s, of uh, shipbuilding, and they built over 83 vessels from that 100-year time stretch. So a lot of history. There was some quarry mining as well going on. Um, it's a beautiful town and, and peaceful. Absolutely. As we're walking up towards the, the house here, we just wanted to stop on this little knoll and take another couple minutes to kind of show you what the coastline here on your 10,000 plus feet of water frontage on Pleasant Bay. Uh, the, also, the, the sellers put about 73 acres into conservation here, so you can always rest assured that your privacy and the, you know, keeping this land pristine for generations to come is going to remain that way. We're also helping out a lot of the uh, aquatic life from salmon and things like that here, so you're always going to have your nice little farm. You could have a little family compound if you want, because we actually have about three other building sites that are on the property outside of the conservation that are usable. Um, but just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the coastline here and show you that this 10,000 feet of water frontage is conserved and ready to be enjoyed by a family or whoever's looking to get involved. So if I wanted to build another cottage or two, yep. the option's available for that. Yeah, if you want the family to come spend a little bit of time or you want a caretaker to help with all the farm needs and the gardens and stuff like that, can easily put up two or three more places on this property and still be within the, the realm for building and staying out of the conservation. Great. So out in the front of the house here, Spencer, we, we certainly have some equestrian potential. How much field are we looking at here? Right here around the house, we got about 17 acres of field. Um, out back, we got about another seven acres or so. So guys like this boy right here can run around and have a great life out on the ocean and really enjoy his, uh, his space out here. So for the uh, person that likes to garden, uh, we certainly have a nice place here to, uh, to grow some vegetables. Absolutely, we got really fertile soil here, uh, not only with great views while you're gardening, so it takes a little bit of that burden off the shoulders, but if you're interested in going farm to table out here and feeding your family with the stuff that comes right from your own ground, then you can easily do that. As you can see, we got a variety of things from tomatoes, carrots, and beans, the corn and lettuce, kale, pretty much anything that you want to eat off of, we got right here and ready to go. So Spencer, what do the animals have here for shelter? Absolutely. So this is um, one of our first kind of barns buildings here. There's actually three stalls that are attached uh, on the right side of the two bay garage that we have here. Um, in the back down here as well, we got a half bath, toilet, all that sort of stuff for, you know, caretakers and things of that nature. Um, upstairs here, we have a full one bedroom apartment, full bath. 
uh, kitchen, the whole nine, so a great caretaker quarters or a great Airbnb, in-law apartment, something like that. Um, so everything is kind of packaged right into one into this barn with the three stalls, the half bath, the two car garage, and then the full one bedroom living upstairs. So it certainly has great Airbnb potential. For sure. Now Spencer, I noticed like a small greenhouse out back. Can we go take a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. So in the back of the caretaker's quarters. Yep, this is, uh, so right here you'd come out of your second floor caretaker apartment up there. You could wrap right around and head over and check out uh, your greenhouse and or makeshift kind of chicken house here. Um, everything's fenced in really nicely. They do have electric fences that surround the property for you know the ultimate protection, especially against those coyotes and things of that nature. But as you can see here, it's a great greenhouse, but it's been converted into mostly a chicken coop right now. Everything fenced in, great little place to make sure that your, your chickens and guinea hens and all the birds that you may have on the property stay safe and produce and have a good life. So fresh eggs for your guests, right? Fresh eggs for the guests at all times, that's for <laughs> sure. Now, what else do we have for, for storage and barn space? Yep, so uh, we're gonna walk towards the back of the property here. We got uh, mostly a lean-to kind of barn and then another fully enclosed barn that um, surrounded a, an old field, about seven acres of field that we have out back that used to be the largest red deer barn and uh, livestock in the state. Beautiful. So Spencer, we've got a clearing up here. What's that about? Yeah, so the, uh, the house is built actually with two four bedroom uh, septic systems. Uh, over here on our right is actually one of the, like, the overflow systems as well. So essentially what we're saying is that you could host the Titanic over here and be able to make sure that everything's still operating correctly. Um, you know, and while we said it earlier, over here on our left side is actually a little knoll Looks steeper on this side, but on the back when we get over there, uh, this is actually one of the potential building sites on the top here. So another beautiful area to put a little cabin or extra house. And this gravel road access is in great shape to, to get to the other field and the other barns. And yeah, stuff. so if you're looking to, you know, you need a tractor, or you gotta pull a trailer, or maybe you have a big camper or something that you wanna put out back for the winter, you got a really beautifully built road, nice and smooth. So no problem getting to all your fields and accessing every inch of the property. Excellent. So the, uh, the sellers have done an amazing job of getting to every inch of the property. We got a couple miles worth of ATV trails, but if you're into uh, hunting or riding your horse around the entire property and catching some different oceanfront views, they're already cut trails ready to rock and roll. So you can come right on the property and start having fun immediately. So if you like to hike, the trails are already here for you. Absolutely, yeah. Very nice. And this is kind of what I was saying that the other building site here, this would essentially kind of be your driveway up to the, the top of the knoll there. You can see how it gradually gets up there. So the views from the top of the knoll for another building site um, would just be amazing. And this is obviously like its own little environment out here, kind of shut off from the rest of the house and the land over on that side with this little tree buffer and road out here. You certainly have some commanding views from that site. Absolutely. Very nice. So when you were talking about views, Spencer, I mean, wow. Pretty nice over here. We're pretty much sitting on the top of the knoll here where that other building site that we've been talking about has been. Uh, as you can see, this field area, which we already identified as about seven acres roughly, uh, this was the home of, at one point, the largest red deer farm uh, in Maine, which is kind of why they have these about se easily seven feet tall fences. I'm six foot three, so these, uh, these fences will keep pretty much anything that you'd ever want inside of them. And uh, yeah, I mean, amazing views of Pleasant Bay looking out across and over on the other side here, an easy, beautiful place to have a, another cabin or home up here. As we're walking up to this other kind of enclosed barn here, uh, we got a three bay uh, lean-to barn over here, tall enough to fit tractors, trucks, whatever you're looking to store in there. If not, just doing firewood and kind of your own uh, milled lumber and things like that. But uh, we're gonna jump into this barn really quick and show you what we got in store here, some pretty interesting stuff inside. Let's go check out the, uh, the other barn that we got here. Um, as you can see, a lot of storage here, no problem, 500 plus bales of hay that you can use for your winter storage and feed. And Real tall ceilings, so your imagination can really take place and you can do whatever you want in here, shop or storage, whatever. 
What do we have out back, Spencer? So this is a pretty cool feature, actually. The sellers are big ham radio folks. Oh, cool. um, so they actually set up their own little uh, outpost here inside the barn, and it's ready to go. So if you want to talk to people around the world on the ham radio, go for it. I'll show you what this looks like, actually. Not many people have probably seen the homemade ham radio station, but we got a beautiful setup in here. Or if you want to make it a little office or something like that, great little space to do what you want. Spencer, we've seen a, a small portion of the property, and I gotta tell you, man, after 30 years in the real estate business, I've seen some nice properties, <laughs> but this one is like checking all the boxes. Yeah, it pretty much has it all, and I'm really excited to uh, show you the main house and get inside, and uh, we'll sit down with the seller and get to know a little bit deeper history of the property, and uh, hopefully give everybody a really nice picture of how much love and energy has been put into this place over the years. Beautiful, I'm following you, buddy. All righty, let's do it. All right, you know how they say it, we saved the best for last. I'm excited to get inside and <laughs> show you too. the beauty here. Awesome big deck for entertaining, obviously, but wait till you see the inside. Alrighty, folks, I am super excited to be sitting down with the owner and seller, Joan, to talk a little bit more about the history of the property and how she's developed it over the years. Thank you for having us. Beautiful oh, property. Uh, tell us, yeah, how, how you uh, built this place up over the years. Well, we saw this when we were kayaking, and we'd been looking for property, and they'd showed us a number of places, and we went by and saw this little spit of rock down here, the pink feldspar, which is the, what we call poor man's marble, that half of Boston is the buildings are built. <laughs> yep. And I said, oh, look, you can walk right down to the shore. There's a little beach. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could get a place like that? Wow. <laughs> And we spoke to the broker, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, we've got that for sale. So we said, well, we'd like to see it. Yeah. <laughs> so we crashed through here. It was all woods. There were no fields. But wow. there had been two families here, and they'd both been gone, about one about 100 years, one about 111. And uh, so we wandered around trying to figure out where we would build. And some of that um, was... Uh, fixed for us when we went and found out how much it would cost to bring electricity here. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we might have a lot of electricity and no house. <laughs> yeah. So we spoke to them and we buried the lines coming in so that we wouldn't have to look at poles yeah. and we wouldn't have to worry about wind and things like that. And then we just started, but we were very fortunate to find this at the time. We'd been looking for about a year. It's amazing. This is a peninsula, and they're all told it's almost two miles of frontage if you count the inlets. Yeah. And um, so forth. So, but it was all woods. Yeah. And we had 13 llamas, and we were trying to figure out how they would eat here without any pasture. Yeah. And we had to figure out where to build a house. Well, we were poking around and we saw a pile of rocks here and went to the conservation service and they showed us some uh, video, some uh, pictures and they said a strawberry farm had been here in the late 1800s. Huh. And so we said, well, if there's a strawberry farm, there's got to be some dirt. It can't be all rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they showed us where and we said, okay, we'll build a house where we can have a pasture and a and be near these pink rocks we can go down and sit by the water and look at the birds and the seals and things like that. So we started clearing, we got it and we were all excited, and we started clearing land. We didn't want any erosion to end up in the uh, channel here or in the pond down below. And we talked to some foresters and people at the University of Maine and they told us to, how to cut the trees as close to the ground as possible mm -hmm. and notch them in the middle to let some water get in. And then 
if we could stand the, the, the moonscape for a couple of years, yeah. it would rot and there would be no erosion and no mess and we would save the soil. Yeah. Well, thank you for telling us all about the outside and the property and how you've conserved all the grounds here. As we're sitting in here and as we walked up, I mean, the house just looks like it's been on the coastline here for hundreds of years, but seems like you guys really put a lot of time, effort, and love into making this really fit the environment. Could you tell us a little bit more about when you built the house and how you guys kind of decided on this look and stuff like that? Well, we found that pile of rocks that when, as we were clearing, and it looked like there might have been an old foundation near here. And we wanted to face southeast, get maximum solar in the morning and in the afternoon. And we wanted to be in between these two ledges to cut down on the wind mm -hmm. and, um, and to m make it so that we, if we had a garden and fields and so forth, we wouldn't get um, as much erosion. Yeah. So we, and we wanted it to look like it belonged in Maine. And so <clears throat> we walked around and we looked at the neighborhood and we didn't want to build a wart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We yeah. wanted to build something that fit. Yeah. And that looked like it would be okay and we wanted lots of light. Yeah. And so we stretched it out and made it so that you could see both, you know, only, only one place has a two room wide. Yeah. So we have views both directions. So when did you, it looks like it's been here for a hundred plus years. When did the house actually kind of final construction? Well, we started in 1988 and we finished in 1990. And we just went slowly and we did as much as we could do then. And then we added the decks. Yeah. And once we were in here, we realized where we wanted to do it and um, porches. Yeah. And we added the, the, uh, the unit there. I had a mother you know, that was widowed and mm -hmm. we thought that would be a good place for her yeah. if she wanted to be there. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful. So, and then we lived in an old house, so we knew, we lived in a house that was in the 1700s. <laughs> so we kind of knew what the paneling looked like and we liked the, the dimensions. And um, we did quite a bit. We had an expert from the um, New England Preservation Society oh. come up and tell us about colors <laughs> and um, how to have it flow because we didn't want to have a lot of halls, wasted space. I wanted the rooms to have the area yeah. and we didn't want to have a lot of corridors and we wanted it to be light. Yeah, it flows so we nicely. we could see both ways. Yeah. And so he helped us with that. And we had some boards from our other house from the attic because we needed to insulate there when we got it, it was an old house. Yeah. So we kept all the old boards and then we had some made that matched. And so we got some old beams and we put those in and we put the boards from our other house. Yeah, those are great. And some of them are 20 inches wide. <laughs> Not and, small. And we took some pictures of simple fireplaces that we thought might a farmhouse be. Yeah. You know, not, and uh, so we did it that way. Yeah, it's beautiful. It looks like one of those Benjamin Franklin Rumford fireplaces. Well, this is a Rumford fireplace. Is it? That's what I thought. Ah, got a little bit of my history. Well, thank you so much for the history and the time. Uh, I'm going to go find out where Pete is around this property somewhere, and we're going to do a little tour of the rest of the house. But thank you so much for the opportunity to learn about the property and hang out with you inside of this beautiful place. Well, you're very welcome. You know, there's been a lot of uh, love and a lot of joy that uh, we've had in, in this house and this property. It has brought immense joy to our family. It's easy to see in every square inch of it, that's for sure. It's uh, absolutely beautiful and there's not uh, anything left untouched that hasn't been loved in this place, that's for sure. So we're excited to check it out and see what Pete thinks of the rest of it, but thank you again. You're welcome. A lot of house to explore and gotta find Pete anyway. Oh, there he is. I see you found the uh, oh. the lounge library hangout here, huh? I was just looking for some peace and quiet, and I found it here in this room. Pretty relaxing in here, I'd say, that's for sure. Why don't you put that down and we go check out the rest of this place. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. All right, well, I gotta show you a little history thing that I've learned over time. This is a Rumford fireplace, actually, invented by Benjamin Franklin. It really throws a bunch of heat off here, but check out this old, like, 1700s 
crane that they used to have to make sure that you could get your food or your soup the way you wanted it. And just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Pretty cool. So as you've seen, dining room, beautiful, big floorboards. And now we're walking into the kitchen. Flows really nicely. I love these old exposed beams and stuff like that. Even for a tall guy, he can make his way through. Even here. for a tall guy, flows real nice. Got a, I think almost a six burner stove over there. So you can feed an army, that's for sure. So we're uh, coming through the living room right now, but I got a really cool screened in porch, little nook area I want to show you real quick. Stay too. man, you got to have <laughs> a screen porch. Got to. All right, Pete, I'm an outdoors guy. Me too. This is one of my favorite places in this entire house. Screened in, easily put some kind of plexiglass stuff up on the windows to have more of a year round usage of this place, but can't you see yourself having a couple lobsters out here? A couple lobsters, some steamers, a cold, cold beer probably, and uh, I'll tell you what, the shade that this room's getting, I mean, it's a hot day today, mm -hmm. but I'm getting that salt breeze coming in. It's fantastic space here, Spencer. Yeah, nice breeze coming through. I love this little space. So where to next, Spence? Well, we're gonna do a couple more rooms in the house here. It is a working, operating B&B right now, so there are some guests that are upstairs. So we're gonna skip a couple rooms sure. out of the privacy of everybody, but Makes sense. we'll see, uh, get into the rest of it here in a minute. Sounds great. Yeah, so you know, for any of you that are looking to see the entire house and get the full tour, uh, feel free to give me a call and we'll set up a time that we can get into every single room and we're going to have a 3D tour as well that'll be coming out pretty soon. But for right now, we'll show you what's available that we can get into the common spaces. All right, man. We are at the formal entry to the B&B &B side of the house right now. So we're going to go upstairs and show you what this kind of revenue generating part of the property is looking like and let's, check it let's out. go explore. Nice wide staircase, that's for sure. So we're upstairs here in the active part of the B&B. &B. Um, as you can see, Pete, right behind you is actually the master suite there, which has a full bath all to itself. Great um, ocean views too. Great ocean views, a lot of natural light, good breezes coming through. Uh, right in front of us here is another full bath, which is actually shared by these two rooms over here. Um, and as you can see, looking into this beautiful room, everything is just set up awesome. Great views of the water. Beautiful. Nice windows, good closets. I mean, just lots a, of natural light in here too. Lots of natural light, beautiful. And these beautiful floors are continuing on through these <laughs> they, white plank floors. They don't stop, I promise. They just keep going through this house. All right, so we've seen a lot of beautiful rooms, but this is one of my favorites. Let's get up to this uh, suite on the other side of the house. It's got its own full setup, little kitchen, full bathroom, and some amazing views. So let's get up there and check this place out. So, wait till you see this. This is my, this would be my little domain right here, Pete, I think. <laughs> I mean, come oh, on, huh? What a view. Beautiful Hold on view. a second. Oh! That's yeah, hard to take. That, <laughs> just makes you want to sit down and enjoy. What a cool suite up here. Got your own little fridge over there, little mini kitchen. You don't even have to leave this little spot for the, the week if you don't want. So this is the private guest suite at the end of the house. This is the private guest suite at the end of the house, all by itself, no rooms around it or anything. It's your own little domain. Very nice. Now, I know you want to get out on that deck right there, but we'll That'd end the tour over there in a minute. Let's just get a little idea of what this suite looks like. We got a full bath right here, nice shower, good storage, all that sort of stuff. Some nice closets here as well for anything that you may have with you. All right, let's dive into this bedroom here and show you what it's like over here on the suite side of the house. A lot of space, as you can see, you got your own little kind of nook couch there, some really good closets over there, a little desk space as well if you need to do some work while you're up here enjoying the beautiful ocean. And I like the views over the field and down to the salt meadow as well. It's a very pretty spot. Yeah, if you're looking to watch some horses or some other deer and things like that around here. You got pretty much every view that you could want from the animals to the ocean. All right, All right man, this is my favorite part. Let's uh, go check out this little eagle's nest. Second floor deck space. I mean, come on, huh? Look at that view. What a view, man. Pretty fun to sit here with a coffee or a beverage at night and watch seals and mackerel and lobster boats all work out here. It's doesn't get much more main than this right here. Pick up a little bit of our vitamin D too while we're at it. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely be tanned up by the time we're out of here. Well, 
Well, Pete, I appreciate you coming down here to uh, 386 West Side Road in Addison, Maine. Quick little recap, 110 acres out here, almost two miles of ocean frontage. Uh, the main house, we got about 6,300 square feet of finished living. Over here in the caretaker house, we got about another 1,000 feet of uh, finished living. And it's just an immaculate spot out here to Beautiful raise a spot. family, create memories. And uh, yeah, we hope that you guys enjoyed the tour out here today. Uh, if you like it, please subscribe, follow us. And if you're looking to get a full tour of this beautiful farm down here in Addison, give me a ring. Let's get it set up and come check it out. Got the mean part like I do now. Hey, bud. Lamas. <laughs>